Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bookcast. This is my platform for sharing short fiction and updates on what I'm reading and writing. This is episode 82, and I am D.L. White. I'm an author of contemporary Southern and romantic fiction novels that center Black love and relationships. I'm also a big fan of books, so we usually begin with the book report, and we talk about writing and topics of the day. My deepest apologies if you hear any beeping in the background. Um, This is not my home. We have vaulted ceilings, and the man of the house is not here to change the smoke detector battery, so it seems to have abated for a few minutes, so let's see if I can get through this podcast episode without the infernal thing beeping in the background. I promise we do not live in the trailer park. So this week, I'll update you on my re- my week in writing and uh, progress on The Pearl, A Black Diamond Romance. I'm very excited to get to it. I know I skipped last week, but a sis was tired. <laughs> so I took the weekend off. I don't regret it. You guys will be fine. The Bookcast is a production of books by D.L. White, written, edited, produced, and supported by me. If you'd love to back me up, I'd be most grateful. The best way to do that is to talk about the books and the podcast, but also buy the books. Books by DLWhite.com slash books has all of the good stuff in ebook or audio. Welcome to Indie April, everyone. I just would like someone to please tell me how it's already April. And like in my mind, it's honestly almost May. So whew, goodness, uh, it's going to be a great month. Uh, as always, I'm celebrating myself because I'm vain about my work and other independently published authors. My debut novel, Brunch at Ruby's, is still on sale in ebook and audio. There's about 15 days left on my sale at Chirp Books as well as my my store. Uh, Spotify and Nook Audio. If you're a member at Kobo Plus, you can grab all of my ebooks and audiobooks as part of your read and listen subscription. I believe it's like $11 a month. Like, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. And a reminder that if you're a premium subscriber at Spotify, you get 15 free hours there. So snatch up my audiobooks. I do get paid for them. Do you have a topic you would like me to cover on the bookcast? Like something you just wondering how I feel about it? Shout me out a holler. I am always on uh, Instagram or Twitter at author underscore DL White, or you can visit the show notes of this here episode at books by com slash bookcast. I welcome your feedback, your ideas, any topics that you would like me to ramble about for 27 to 33 minutes. So I have a great update today. Um, the writing has really been good lately. I am actually I'm having so much fun. I'm at the point where like it's actually fun to sit down and parse out what these people in my head are saying. So I'm gonna do this real quick podcast update and get back to it. I've got an aggressive timeline in my head so to so I can have enough time to review and edit the manuscript before it goes to editing. I have no time to waste. So let's get going. Today we'll start with the book report as always. Then I'll update on the writing, writing, writing. Today is Saturday, April 6th. It is 9.26 a.m. It's sunny in the ATL. I have a mic and I am ready to dig in. But first, I am back home. And that means I have my beloved Bustello coffee. Let's have some. Oh, and it's good. It's good. It's good. Listen, I need to mention, because people have commented on this before, if you are listening to my podcast and you hear random noises, that's my stomach. Uh, I had weight loss surgery in 2012, so more than 10 years ago, and still she makes a lot of noise when I eat or drink. I don't know what that is, um, but I do have like a narrowed... um, opening from my esophagus into my stomach and it's it's like a it's like a funnel it's it's my it's I got the sleeve so my stomach is just like a narrow I mean they just call it a sleeve it just literally looks like a sleeve that goes to my lower intestine and um, I believe that food and drink sort of gathers at the top of my esophagus and like slowly makes its way down into my stomach. And um, the sound that you hear is my body working. It's doing its thing. But she makes a lot of noise whenever I eat or drink. And so that's what that sound is. Stop asking me. I'm joking. You can ask me all I want. Uh, I love nothing more than to talk about my weight loss surgery 
and um, reading and writing books. So that's what that sound is. But I have noticed when I'm editing that I try to cut those sounds out, but she likes to speak when I'm speaking. So sometimes I can't. Anyhow, let's begin with the book report as always, because I am a book head. If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to read a book. I have read 52 books of my challenge to read 150 books this year. I'm a whopping 13 books ahead on my Goodreads challenge thanks to audiobooks. I don't see slowing down anytime in my future. Um, The books be booking. On my list of books I have read, remember I missed an episode last week, so this is like double the books. I have one Steamy Night by uh, Miss Brenda Jackson. Um, this is a romance to listen to this in audio. It was, I mean, it was, it was a Brenda Jackson book. I, I find a lot of her books to be the same book, different characters, but also if I need an easy read, I go find me a Westmoreland by Brenda Jackson and put it on and like fold some laundry or whatever. I listened to Hostile Takeover, which is Blackwood Billions number one by Christina C. Jones. This book really gives me like, um, romantic suspense vibes like it's like it's supposed to be a romance but it's kind of not because they kind of hate each other through most of this book it's most definitely an enemies to lovers i did not like either i i did not like either of characters in this book i felt like the hero was um aggressive and he was a bully and very uh pushy and decisive and demanding didn't like him um at all i can't remember his name uh, and i'm not gonna look it up i found the heroine to be a bit of a pushover i i just i wasn't really into the romance and I'm using that in light quotes per se, but I did like the thread of uh, a little bit of um, darkness and undercurrent of suspense in this book. It's very, uh, if you've, if you've read or listened to her, if you can series reminiscent of that first romantic suspense series uh, that she wrote. It's also, it's very um, uh, like the Rose series and anti up like along that vein where there's a romance, but there's also more than that. Uh, I'm very, interested in other books in the Billions series uh, because there's some elements that were brought out in this book that I hope continue through uh, the following like the black group um, I'm, I'm into it uh, bring it um, also did finally finish the American Daughters by Maurice Carlos Ruffin after I met him and I was like ah, I'm reading your book I was like yeah I should probably actually finish that book Got it did. Also, American Daughters by uh, Dr. Piper G. Hughley. Got those both in the bag. Both were fine. They were, they are historical fiction. I just, after reading so much romance, was not really in the mood for them once I got to them. I really need to like read books when I'm like, oh my God, this book's coming out. I need to request it. Then I'm so happy when I get an advanced copy and then um, I put it aside for a rainy day or the weekend before the book is due and then I don't feel like reading it. That is not any shade toward either um, book or author or project. I just am a mood reader. Uh, So I read them because I had an advanced copy of them. Both were perfectly fine books. Um, I read One Night of Fun, A Forbidden Office Romance by Renee Lux. I'm going to say here on the podcast, I didn't too much enjoy this. I read this because it was an office romance, but wasn't the best thing I ever read. Um, Taking Chances, McAllister Friends number two by Tay Russ. This is very early in Tay's series, but I kind of uh, really couldn't tell. <laughs> it, it was... Um, it was a good read. Uh, I feel like, you know, of course, Tay's recent work are, you know, different and she's definitely leveled up, but she also has like a, a, a like a, a style and a voice that I recognize. Like I could tell you this is a Tay Russ book without knowing it was a Tay Russ book. I finished Unfinished Business by uh, Christina C. Jones. This is in the Strictly Professional duology. Uh, I, I like the first book better, but this one wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. Um, I read Working With Her Crush, A Friend's Lover's Romance by Reese Ryan. Of course, I love me some Reese. Love, love, love me some Reese. And I, I needed another workplace romance. Uh, always enjoy her. I listened to a Red March Madness by Nicole Falls simply because it was Nicole Falls. I don't know nothing about no basketball, but this was super well done. It was um, a women's basketball coach novella. Uh, well done. Uh, also listened to Jackrabbit Skin by Ivy Pachota and The Other Side of the Road by Andrea Bartz. 
This was part of the Never Tell collection uh, by Audible. I just wanted to finish out the collection. And then um, yesterday, last night, actually, I finished Watch Where They Hide by Tamron Hall. And let me tell you, I was really looking forward to this, but it was a bit of a disappointment. I ended up giving it three stars because I did not expect the ending. It did kind of ramp up like the last quarter of the book really was the full story. I feel like this was very jumbled. Um, it read really first draft um, kind of level. Uh, there's a lot in this book that we don't really need. Um, and I feel like Tamron was really reaching for something more when this could have really just been a mystery. It um, it follows uh, Jordan, who is an investigative journalist. And um, after her career kind of explodes, if you read the first book um, as the Wicked Watch, I felt that was very well done, and I was hoping she would do uh, so much better in her follow-up novel. This one just really didn't measure up to the first book, but Jordan's career explodes after she solves a case in her first novel, and she gets the opportunity to anchor, and right as she is supposed to hit the anchor desk, she gets hit with a uh, investigation in progress and the police aren't taking this book seriously and Jordan doesn't really want to take the case It's because it's just, it's a missing white woman and she doesn't want to like dive into this because it, she doesn't want it to be missing white woman um, experience um, but she starts to uncover things that don't uh, pan out that don't match up, that don't make sense and she forgoes her opportunity to uh, sit at the anchor desk to um, to investigate this missing woman case did turn out it you know the ending was interesting it just I felt like we got like 250 pages of what is happening just, just a lot of phone calls a lot of driving around a lot of pontificating of what's happening what's going on here this doesn't it's just like I just feel like she had a, a premise and like really stretched it out to like you know 200 300 pages there wasn't enough book there to call it a book. This week I am reading um, an advanced copy of Out of Office by A.H. Cunningham. Uh, it's good so far. Um, and then I'm going to read Office Crush, which is was formerly titled Invasion of Pro Privacy by Imani J. And a book called Take It on the Clock Number One by Shay Sanders, which I think is more of uh, an erotica series, but it's an office romance. And so we are going to read it. <laughs> This week, I had the opportunity to be a guest on the Book Buzz Show, which is a video uh, interview series. It's a video interview show hosted by Cheryl Brooks, and she usually has a guest um, from the book industry. It's a pretty new show, but they're very well run. I took the opportunity to watch past interviews with some of my fave writers like Sharon C. Cooper, Joan Vassar, Reese Ryan. I'll link to my episode in the show notes, but or you can search for the Book Buzz Show on YouTube or Facebook. Book. It's a really great conversation about Hey Lover, which is a book I don't get to talk about much. Um, we also talked about my writing journey, my reading habits, the ultimate romance for me, um, and the challenges of being a self-published author and how I engage in self-care while I am writing. I have a recommendation for you. I think I've I think I've recommended this before, but this particular episode is a need to listen. The Word Makers podcast, Making Words, hosted by one of my absolute favorite people, a writing ass writer that is Tasha L. Harrison, who is also the ringleader of the Word Makers gang. Um, there's a recent episode on settling the debate about H-E-A, also known as the happily ever after, which is a mainstay in the romance genre. I just retweeted the link on my Twitter and Facebook timeline. And some of us need to tattoo this episode on our foreheads. This is a really great, great, great episode that talks about what I call capital R romance, then um, romantic fiction and what the difference between the two is, as well as our favorite romance tropes and subgenres. These episodes are the ones that I like to uh, listen to more than once to soak it all in. It's a great podcast if you are interested in uh, tips and theories about writing, about editing, and in general, being a writing ass writer. You can subscribe to this podcast at work. I cannot speak today. Perhaps I've not had enough coffee. You can subscribe to this podcast at wordmakers.org slash podcast. On the writing update. Woohoo! 
My last reported word count was just over 50,000 words, and my word count goal is 70,000. At the outset, it's probably going to creep to like 75, 80, but I'm going to do my best to cut it down. I'm currently at 63,523 words, y'all. I'm positive I'll go over 70,000 words. I still have some story to tell it. I don't think I can tell it in the word count I have left. I might have to cut a bit from this when I'm done, but I'll give it a really good read through before it hits the editor. That's why I want to finish as soon as possible so that I have some time to go through it and call what I don't really need. But right now I feel like I need everything I have for the story flow and for completing a full story arc. Um, this week, the plan will be to write when I can as often as I can. I have reached the point that I call the point of no return where I know the book is going to happen. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I write every chance I get. I have some work travel coming up, not this coming week, but next week, like the 14th through the 17th. So that always makes it hard for me to write because I'm working from about 7 a.m. to typically 8 or 9 p.m. And the week after that, I have that large in-person quarterly meeting in which I am the point person. So it's another few long like 7 a.m. to like 6 or 7 p.m. days. So I lose a lot of writing time in April, something I didn't really consider when I set up my writing schedule. So I need to be on my Zoom. I need to stand on business. I don't know what either of those terms mean, but I feel I used them correctly. The good news is that I'm nearing the end of the story, so it won't take much to wrap it up. I'm hopeful that I can finish by around April 21st, mostly because I want to tell my quarterly author check-in group that I finished another book. But I also want to take about 10 days to really drill into the book, polish, 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 go through it front to back, then back to front. I know today is April 6th, but like I said earlier, the way my calendar is set up, it's almost May in my mind and my deadline loometh. Um, Story-wise, Kari and Davis are so much fun right now. Like They're both kind of like, um, like petty, sarcastic with each other. Kari is just such a breath of fresh air in Davis's life. Davis is very... Um, Davis is worried about his job and he's worried about the hotel. So he's very like stuffy and uh, formal. Um, uh, there's a guy on uh, TikTok and Instagram that does like a lot of corporate speak funny uh, videos. And I made a joke on my Instagram stories that this is how Davis talks in real life. And Vance says, man, I hope that you don't climax in full sentences. Uh, so that's kind of like where I'm going with that. And Kari is just kind of really chipping away at Davis's really stiff exterior. Um, they're really getting to know each other very well. And they're getting opportunities to go to bat for each other, which ramps up the affection they have for each other. And the added conflict that uh, the added conflict and the stressor is that the staff at the resort can't know they're dating. As Davis says, any advancements she makes would be seen as something she earned on her back. So their relationship has to remain a secret for now. I just wrote the beginning of chapter 21 and the resort receives a visitor that they really don't want and things are about to change for Kari in a big way. She's going to have to make what seems like an obvious but unpopular choice given her job and when Davis backs her, it's going to have a ripple effect. I'm really excited to write this part of the book. So I'm going to end the podcast here and get to it. Thank you so much for joining me for today's chat. I know it was a bit of a short one, but I really needed to just like get into it. Um, don't forget to share the podcast if you enjoyed this episode. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, give a girl a rating. I'd really appreciate it. Do not forget that you can support this podcast with your book purchases and by spreading the good word or by throwing some coins in the hat at bookcast.bussprout.com. Every little bit does really help. I will be back next week to debrief my reading and writing week. Please enjoy this weekend. Have a superlative week and we'll chat again soon. Bye-bye.